So I want to talk about Tyler Hero's injuries, injury, plural. I don't really know. Now, I did go to 19 and a half years of law school. So I'm basically a doctor and it's safe to say I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyways, something doesn't quite add up to me. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. First, I want to talk about why this is relevant. Now, earlier today, Sham Sharani on his podcast or whatever, dropped some news concerning the Heat injury report. Now, I want to play that 40 second clip in full because he does mention some other guys that we're going to get into later. Duncan Robinson, there's optimism. He's going to be back at least within the next week or so. He got testing on his back injury, but the good news is it showed no major damage. The hope is he's back sometime in the next week. Mm. The, the big worry is Tyler Hero. He has not played in a while. There's no uh, real sense when he'll be back and when he'll be available. What? He got a PRP shot a couple weeks ago. Still no clear sense on the timeline. So the big first news I want to get to is Sham Sharania saying there's no real timeline for Tyler Hero's return. Now my guy Heat vs. Haters put that in the quotes on Twitter and Tyler Hero quote tweeted that and said cap or, or put the, the, little, the little blue cap emoji followed by a reply of his own in which he said I just had a great workout but I ain't coming back no time soon. Obviously being a little bit sarcastic there. Now, kind of what I want to say is, uh, well, I, at first, I think this implies that Tyler Hero is coming back soon, or at least he thinks he's coming back soon. Otherwise, he wouldn't be talking about this workout he had if it didn't go great or if he didn't feel great, right? But at the same time, I don't think anything Sham said was a lie, right? Because at the same time, there really has been no direct report on when Tyler Hero is coming back or at least expected to return to play. Now, I want to kind of go through the timeline of events of what happened because we do have an idea of when he could come back if everything goes according to plan. So this all started on a game on February 23rd versus New Orleans Pelicans. If y'all remember, that's the game where Jimmy and Najee Marshall got into it because of uh, some simple Kevin Love foul. And remember that whole scuffle started? Well, to end that game, Tyler Hero slipped on a wet spot on the court, knee bent in an awkward direction, and they, they called it a hyperextension right and then we didn't hear anything about him for a couple weeks so we're all thinking oh he's having some sort of issue with the knees you know hyper extensions is not the end of the world but it could take eight weeks or so to kind of get healthy right but then we got some random news on like march 15th march 16th from anthony chang saying that tyler hero got something injected into his foot called a platelet rich plasma so it was, it was a platelet rich plasma injection or a PRP injection for short. Now they said that essentially with that uh, injection, you basically get reevaluated in two weeks, right? Which makes it this Friday. So if you're wondering when Tyler Hero can maybe play or at least, you know, get looked at again, it would be this Friday. So that date's coming up. And for some further news on that, they kind of said that once you get that injection, there's no work, no physical activity for a week. And then you spend one to two weeks sort of revamping up. And if it does take Tyler Hero, those those full three weeks in totality, that could have him back for the Heat's last, you know, road trip, which is on April 5th, starting against the Houston Rockets. So that sort of gives you kind of a timeline of when he could return. But it's also not necessarily like an expected timeline because we haven't heard how anything is going. Now, the part that doesn't add up to me that that leaves me a little confused is out of nowhere. On that March 15th, when Anthony Chang dropped that report about, about the foot injection, that whole time, we thought Hero was out because of the knee issue. We had never heard anything about a foot issue. It was only until that article where Chang mentioned that Hero has actually been having problems with his foot since the All-Star break. So you had the All-Star break, you came back, Hero played a few games, you played games versus the Pelicans, he messed up his knee, and then the knee was fixed or healed, but now it was the foot that was bothering him. And that game against the Pelicans was on February 13th or February 23rd. He didn't get foot injections until about three weeks later on March 15th. So did his foot get worse in the time that he was supposed to be healing his knee? Because one, if he always had foot problems, why was he playing against the Pelicans? Okay, maybe he was trying to play through it. And two, why did they decide that he didn't need injections in his foot until three weeks later after he was already sidelined for the knee? So essentially, they said he, his knee was healed in two weeks, but now the foot problem started. None of that really just adds up to me. 
And what that means is it's basically been over a month now since Tyler Hero has played basketball. And I think if I had to say if Shams was correct, yeah, he's correct because we don't know when Tyler Hero is expected back. And to pour on to that confusion, we actually got a report maybe three weeks ago that Tyler Hero was expected to return back versus the Utah Jazz. That's a report that that uh, Barry Jackson put out. Hero was even questionable for a game or two back then, I remember. But that was three weeks ago. So how are you telling me that Tyler Hero was questionable and now he's been out another three weeks and he's not even doesn't even have the questionable designation. He's just listed as out for every single game. Something doesn't add up to me. I'm not saying something fishy or mysterious is going on. I'm just saying I think Shams was right. I know Tyler Hero's calling cap on, oh, he'll be back soon, but it doesn't look like it. Now, again, as Heat fans, we're not really in the know on any of the Heat's injury situations because the Heat are the most secretive team when it comes to this stuff. And I know a lot of Heat fans get nervous because of that, because usually the less you hear, the worse it is. You know, we've seen situations similar where you don't hear anything about a guy, you don't think it's that big an issue, and then the Heat hits you with a bombshell that a guy is out the rest of the season. I, I to, to a certain extent, that's what we saw with Josh Richardson, right? Because we saw him get the dislocated shoulder. We heard that there was uh, nothing, you know, we, I, we heard that it was not, not minimal, but something he could recover from. And then it was a week or so later, season ending shoulder surgery, right? So a lot of Heat fans are speculating that we might see that with Tyler Hero, which is a concern. But then at the same time, you have Tyler Hero saying he's having a good workout. So nobody really knows the situation. And that kind of tells me that there is no timetable for Tyler Hero's return. And that's concerning because you're talking about a guy who's in what it's his fourth season now. And almost every single year, he's dealt with some sort of injury, especially at, when it comes towards the end of the season, like in the Eastern Conference Finals two years ago, and then in the first round last year, and now you got this. And there's the potential he may miss the rest of the season, even though I personally don't think that that's the case. I think he'll be back maybe the last week of the season just to give him a few games to ramp up going into the playoffs. And I sure hope that's the case, right? Because... As much as I've clamored on this this uh, YouTube channel that Hero is better coming off the bench, this team is not better without him. This team needs Tyler Hero. We see their scoring struggles. I know they missed Jimmy Butler versus the Warriors, but the, the, did the Heat even score 90? What did they finish with, like 88 yesterday? Definitely under 100, which has been something they've been doing all year. I think they're like the the their fourth most, or the, they're the team that has the fourth most games scoring under 100 points in the entire league. And the other three teams are like the trash ass organizations like Charlotte and Portland, right? Miami's up there with them because they cannot score. So they need Tyler Hero. And you're seeing them struggle without him now, but you're also seeing them struggle because they're missing Duncan Robinson and Kevin Love. And we'll talk about those guys in just a minute here as well. But they definitely need Tyler Hero. And it's concerning because you get into the point where these injuries are starting to become a pattern. Now, I know a lot of people might have pushback on that and say, oh, it's freak injuries. He had the ankle injury earlier this year. He landed on someone last year in first round versus Milwaukee. It was a, a broken wrist diving for a loose ball. And yeah, those things are, you know, not preventable. It's just a, a random freak accident. But some guys are just more brittle than others. There's a lot of guys who might have landed and twisted their ankle like Tyler and not had to miss the two months or whatever that he did. Now, I'm not saying Tyler should have played right away. That was a serious twist. But even with the, the, the wrist injury last year, there's a lot of guys who would have dove, had their wrist hit, and not broke their wrist like Tyler Hero did. This is not a slight on Tyler Hero. I don't think this is something that he can fix. You know, Obviously, he can get stronger and stuff like that, but I don't think he's a, a weak guy. I don't think he's not tough. I think he's a very tough player, and I think he works very, very hard. That's all we heard about Tyler Hero is he has an amazing work ethic, and I believe it. But unfortunately, some guys are just injury prone, whether it's guys like Derrick Rose back in the day or modern guys like Kyrie or Zach Levine or Joel Embiid, Zion Williamson. Some guys' bodies just can't hold up to this, hold up to NBA basketball. And it's of no fault of their own. I just think that's the way they were born. That's the way their bodies function. And I hope this is more of just a bump in the road in Tyler Hero's career because I hope he has a very long and healthy career. But so far, a pattern is starting to develop of injury concerns. And that's a problem. I mean, I think if you go back the last four years, he's played almost as many games as Zion Williamson. 
who, like I just said, people talk about as one of the most injury-prone players in recent memory. If if Terry Rozier plays every game the rest of this season and Tyler Hero doesn't return, then Terry Rozier will have played one less game for the Miami Heat than Tyler Hero this year. Think about it. The Miami Heat got Terry Rozier at the trade deadline. He's been on this team less than half the season, and he will have played essentially just as many games as Tyler Hero. That's the problem. Because when you're talking about maybe not wanting to trade Tyler Hero for a star or even lesser than that, not wanting to trade Tyler Hero for two or three good rotational pieces, because Hero does have potential to be a very great scorer in this league, maybe maybe a low-level star, which is, which is a great player, right? If you can't trust him for health-wise, obviously the, the old saying, availability is the best ability, you got to take that into account when you're talking about Tyler Hero and his trade value come this offseason, which who knows what his value around the league is at, but I'm just talking about how the Heat value him. Maybe the Heat wanted to hold on to him in certain trades in the past that they no longer decide he's worth holding on to. Just not again, not from a talent thing, but just because he can't stay healthy. And that's unfortunate because no matter what people think I think about Tyler Hero, I do like Tyler Hero a lot. Outside of Tyler Hero, a couple other injuries we're waiting to uh, hear back from, as Sham said earlier, is Duncan Robinson. Uh, they called his injury something weird, but it's, essentially it's a back problem, had some back spasms. If you remember, his last game was versus the 76ers, and he played terrible. And I remember that because that's when he was shooting hot. I smashed that boys over, over like three and a half threes. He was like one of five, played like 20 minutes. And then we found out after the fact it's because he was injured. He didn't even play like the second half that game. Uh, but the good news is it's no structural damage. He'll be back soon because they certainly can't afford to miss him and Tyler Hero because the shooting has gone terrible. The Heat shot like 24% from three yesterday versus the Warriors. That's disgustingly bad. Uh, but hopefully he gets back soon. And I do think he'll be the, the starting two guard going forward. One, because... Obviously, Tyler Hero will need some time to mesh, I think, with everyone again and mesh with Terry Rozier because they didn't get a lot of time together in that starting backcourt, only played a handful of games. But two, because Duncan Robinson has played great in the starting role, and we've seen his chemistry with Jimmy and Bam, uh, and I don't think anyone can argue that it's been pretty seamless. Uh, and then the other guy that we're waiting to hear back from is Kevin Love, who's missed 14 straight games with a heel injury, uh, and that sucks because they need him a lot as well because he was the backup big and that means that when he's out you're either getting these Orlando Robinson or Thomas Bryant minutes who I think he fan I, I think both are okay I think Heat fans are starting to come around on both those guys because they got a lot of flack earlier this season particularly Thomas Bryant but I think both those guys are fine in small stints and Spolster is trying to find a way to only need them for small stints Thomas Bryant's good for a 10 minute stretch if you need him more than that it's looking a little bit ugly. Spo knows that, and the way he's been trying to mitigate that is by having Nikola Jovic play a lot of that backup five. We've seen Jovic go from playing 15 to 20 minutes to 25-ish minutes, uh, and I do think Jovic has been pretty decent at that backup position, particularly defensively, which is something that I've been talking about a lot. Anyways, that's pretty much all I got to say for this video. Let me know if y'all think Tyler here will be back soon, if you think his cap emoji means anything, or if you think he's just trolling. Anyways, I do want to say again, uh, I'll be back in Fort Lauderdale uh, just on vacation for like the next week. Uh, so I might not have a post game video for Friday. I definitely don't think I will Friday. Uh, maybe for some of the games after that. Just depends where I'm at with the family and if I'm busy. So don't worry, I'm not missing. You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony D underscore Heats if you want updates on if I'm posting or not. Uh, but that being said, like the video, subscribe, because it does help me out a lot. And I'll see y'all next time. Look, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill them off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.